best OBS settings for recording is the topic of today's video. If you're new to the Tutorial Tucker channel, please go and subscribe down below. I really do appreciate it. And smash a big fat like on this video and turn notifications on so you're notified every time I go and upload a brand new video. So OBS settings are really important to getting some good recordings. I'll be making a streaming uh, video like this very, very shortly. So I hope you do enjoy it and watch all the way to the end because I'm showing you different settings and different aspects of the software. So yeah, without any further ado, let's jump straight into this video. So as you can see, we're now on OBS and let's jump straight into this. So here we have the scenes. I think this is like the first thing to start with for the settings. So the scenes are essentially each individual layout. So for example, for recording, I have one um, preview of my monitor here and on my other monitor, I have this one, my audacity. So yeah, so basically for each um, scene, you can have different um, captures. So I have my one monitor capture here and I have one monitor capture here. Now quickly, the more sources you add, so they're different layers, for example, the more power will be needed from your CPU or GPU. Um, so say if you have like a webcam layer, your display layer, and maybe another video playing, that will increase CPU usage. So if you do have a lower spec PC, I do recommend trying to keep it more simple and just by having maybe, I'd say one layer like this one here. But yeah, that's the main idea of the scenes and the sources. You can add, you know, different, uh, you can add webcams, you can add monitors, uh, you can add games, text, so yeah. Basically, the more layers and you, when you're recording or streaming, that will increase your CPU usage with my experience and maybe different for everyone. But yeah, let's ju jump into the next bit, which is the audio mixer. So essentially, here you can mix your mic audio and your desktop audio. So as you can see, this is my mic audio, which is moving because I'm speaking. Um, but obviously, the desktop audio will be, um, will be the same loudness as the mic audio. So obviously, you need to decrease that too. Sort of depends how loud the game or music you're playing. Um, but yeah, you can also add uh, other music as well, I believe. You can add, say, um, audio and other aspects of it, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and then here is scene transition. So for recording, that probably won't be a thing. It's mainly when you're sort of switching scenes. So currently it's on a fade, um, but you can add it to cut. So I believe that's just like an instant um, change. So yeah, you probably won't use that unless you're say transition between your full, your main like um, webcam to webcam and your monitor. But yeah, that's sort of more personal. So let's jump straight into the settings. So what we want to do is come down to settings and then we'll be greeted with this. So I'll try and make this a bit bigger because we might as well and then we can jump straight into this. So the main thing is in the general is it's mainly more personal stuff. So you can have a theme where you can have it say a system um, or you can have it dark mode, it's up to you. Um, and then the rest of this is all personal preference. So it's stuff sort of like outputs, like when you're streaming, so automatically record and streaming. So maybe if you're trying to do like a stream of highlights, you can then split them all up um, and stuff like that. And then the rest of this is all really personal. So it's stuff like, um, show mouse at hide mercer hide cursor over projectors and loads of other stuff like that so it's all personal um but anyway let's jump straight into this so streams of streaming so i won't be covering that into the first bit but i think the first thing i'll cover it in the video because that's like the actual display and how you're recording so make sure you keep watching this video by the way simply because i'm going over the full setting so it'll be useful to watch the whole thing but yeah so the base canvas is what your your, your monitor is so my monitor is 1920 by 1080 um actually i do have an ultra monitor so that's why it is 2560 because it's longer but I only like the, I like it to be 1920 because obviously then if I do the 2560 then it's really long and it's too long for my liking um, so yeah that's why I have it like that and then the output is what you're actually recording so for example you could record in 720p if you wanted to by coming down to 720 here and then clicking apply down here key 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 message always click apply otherwise uh, you may lose some settings if you don't save it by accident um so yeah you can literally save um your video in any format but you have to do this obviously before you start recording to you don't want to record in a really bad quality by accident because then you can't undo that after you've recorded so i personally do it in 1080p i do recommend trying to 1080p like hd is just like a key thing for youtube nowadays 720p is pretty much good enough. I occasionally use that, um, but I try to use 1080p where I can, just because it, you know a lot of people have the internet now to be able to watch it in HD. Um, now, downscale filter is basically the quality of the actual image. So I've got mine on the max one. My PC tends to be able to use that okay, um, but if maybe you could try it with the max setting, and if it doesn't work, then slowly sort of work your way down and test. Like testing is a key thing um, with your settings. So yeah, try it on the best or then go to buy cubic area, then buy linear. Um, but I would try and, and use at least buy cubic just because the quality is really good. Um, buy cubic is fine. I used to use that. I've only recently started using the Lank, um, Lank Zos. They're all very um, similar overall, but I do recommend using this one here. 
And then FPS is really personal, but I would recommend at least using 30. Anything higher than that is a good thing. Um, I usually use 60 because I really like the sort of the smoothness um, when doing videos. Um, but 30 is absolutely fine, and a lot of videos are still uploading onto 30. But even if you render your videos in 30 FPS once you're once you finish editing, I'd you still use 60 because it still increases smoothness a bit because obviously you record it in 60, it's only going down to 30. Um, but if you can use 60, do. But if you can't use 30, then that's absolutely fine. Then go and click apply down here. And we need to go back to output. Now output is basically the main section for um, your more recording settings. So you've got streaming settings and recording settings, and uh, we can jump into recording of course. So you probably will be on simple, so you'll just have this. Make sure you come back to output mode and change it to advanced. And then you'll have these. So you've got streaming, recording, audio, replay, buffer. We'll start on recording. We may touch audio a bit, but this is all pretty much the same. Um, make sure it's on 160. You can increase it, but for me, 160 is absolutely fine because I actually record my audio separately anyway, but I imagine 160 is fine for, for most audio quality. So anyway, come to recording, and we've got all these settings here. So let's stop here. So I usually use standard. Um, just keep it simple, and uh, you don't really need to use custom output. In my experience, standard's absolutely fine. Recording path, this is where your videos are going to be saved. So I have mine in uh, my video folder. Then I can just go and grab them and drag them into my editing software or upload them straight to YouTube depending on what I'm doing with it. So recording format, there are so many here actually. We've got FLV, MP4, Move, MKV, TS, uh, MU3U8. Now I think I've heard FLV is easier to recover. Yeah, it's just something here. So recording saved to MP4 or Move um, will be unrecoverable. Um, so FLV can be recoverable personally. If something goes corrupt for me, I just re-record it anyway. Um, so MP4 is absolutely fine for me. Um, and then for the encoder, make sure you use X264. I personally should always use that. I haven't tried that before. Maybe in the future, I'll make a video if I test that out and I'll tell you. I just have the rescale output on 1920 by 1080 um, and you can obviously change that to whatever you have. I'm not sure the difference but I just have the rescale um, output anyway. Uh, you don't have to have that on but I just do it anyway just to make sure it is in 1080p. Now down here you have your CBR so this is your um, constant bit rate, you can have variable bit rate. I like to keep mine constant because I'm recording. Um, so for this I usually have mine at um, 5000 but it's gone back to 2500, I'm not sure why. Um, but essentially with this the higher is the better quality. Um, so 5000 for me it's absolutely fine but you can go and decrease yours if your PC can't handle it or your, your Mac whatever you want. So essentially with this it's, it's just another testing thing like the, the thing I talked about in the video. Just test it out until you find sort of like the sweet spot where you get high quality, lag free and um, it's good enough for you. So yeah you can have yours on 4000, um, just test how it looks. So I'm going to keep mine on 5000 for now and constant. Now down here I always have my keyframe interval on zero. I believe that's when you're switching scenes but I'm not fully sure what that is. Um, I personally just keep it on zero. Down here you've got your CPU usage, so as you can see high equals less CPU. Ultra fast uses a lot less CPU power than very fast, so if you go like placebo that uses a lot of CPU power, like very slow, so you've got to have like an insane PC. But for me very fast works really well, um, if it doesn't then you can always go up so it's super fast and ultra fast. Another sort of testing thing, um, I'm pretty sure ultra fast is really fine for the quality wise though, so I'm happy very fast anyway and it seems to keep my CPU usage quite um, low. Then click apply of course, we've now finished in this tab and all you want to do is come to hotkeys. Now hotkeys is pretty personal, um, it depends if you want to set a key for recording. So say if I want to have a start recording button, you click it there and then I can click any button so I can make it um, naught. So I put, and then when I press, it's gonna go and start recording. So I'm just gonna go remove that because I put, I just cl simply click on it. I come down here and click start recording if I want to. So yeah, you can go and add these if you want to say transition to another scene. It's really useful if you're streaming, I think. But personally, I don't bother with it. Um, but obviously, you can if you want to. So that's useful um, if you want to have your your keyframes. Um, and hotkey sorry I meant so yeah let's go to advanced and finished it's off now here it's like more sort of technical um, settings so personally for process priority I keep normal but I'm pretty sure so you can increase it to high so that would basically mean if you're recording a game your game would have more lag than um than OBS so it's up to you my normal is fine for me I don't tend to record gameplay I tend to record my screen so normal is absolutely fine but maybe if you're experiencing lag or you want it to be super super smooth you're recording then have it on high but normal is fine for me renderer I keep it on direct 3d 11 I only have that one option so uh, I go for that color format I'd make sure that's on RGB NV12 is more for streaming so if we go back to RGB um, 
we get a message down here saying color formats other than nv12 are primarily in intended for recording so it's good for recording um so if you use rgb when streaming it just increases your cpu usage but i'm not streaming so that's fine with me and for this i just keep it on 601 and color range partial it seems to work fine for me and the quality seems good enough for how i'd like it so file formatting so this is how it will save it so this is like the year month day hour minute so and seconds so you could just say like um video and then it's going to go and uh it's going to have it there for you as well so it'll just name it like video one then video two the more you record so hey which is useful is overwrite if the file already exists so i have that off in case i overwrite an important file for example so automatically remux to mp4 means if say you record in the other format um flv i was talking about which was in here so if i did record an flv it automatically converts it to mp4 but I already recorded mp4 so for me personally that is unnecessary but maybe if you do go and record in flv so you can always save your file if you have to um you know you can um rescue if it's corrupts or something like that you can but obviously i record in mp4 so i do not need to stream delay that's what if you're streaming and then the rest of this is pretty much only for streaming so yeah i hope you have on this video useful um we can go and click apply and then obviously we can go and test this out so let's go for recording one which should be down here my audacity and we click start recording now it's recording and it all looks pretty good so then we can go and stop recording and uh, as you can see it does tell me my cpu usage down here and uh, that's fine with me so all you can do is then go and open up your file explorer and we can go and look at the video so here it is down here as you can see video.mp4 i'm just going to double click it and it should open up and as you can see it's absolutely fine the quality looks good to me and uh, that's all ready to go and stop being edited with so yeah i hope you have found this useful if you have please go and leave a like i really do appreciate it and subscribe to the channel for more content like this and i'll catch you in the next one peace out